Hey there, welcome to another edition of Rhythmic Building Blocks. If you're new here, please take a second to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you're notified when there's a new video. This is the sixth video in this series and we are building on previous concepts. So if you're confused by any of this at all, just click the link in the description to start the series from the beginning. Last time we started talking about patterns. Patterns are the foundation of playing rhythm guitar, writing beats, accompanying other musicians, and really just so much of what makes a well-rounded musician in general. We started with this pattern. This is the slightly altered version of the Afro-Cuban clave pattern. And extra bonus points goes to Tommaso Grandi, who did correctly identify another potential name for this pattern, although he's a little too smart because we're not quite there yet. We talked a lot about the clave and how it's used a lot in funk music, and I linked to that playlist of James Brown songs that all use that pattern. So definitely keep checking that out, keep practicing that. So, so far we've got the clave and we've got the Charleston and we could keep going and move on to a totally different pattern, just keep adding in new patterns, but there's actually something we can do to get a lot more mileage out of the patterns that we already know. So to do this, we are going to set aside the clave for a little while, we'll be coming back to it. We're going to stick with the simpler Charleston rhythm, and let's just do it once per measure like this and we'll rewrite the rhythm so that we fill in all of the ghost notes, 16th notes in between our real notes that we'll be scratching along to. And just for fun, we're gonna move up a half step to B flat minor and do a minor six voicing. So this will be D flat, G, and B flat. So now what we can do is take this whole rhythm and actually shift it one sixteenth note later and get this totally new pattern. So using our syllabic subdivision, the original was one, uh, one, uh, three, four, one, uh, and the new one is the 16th note right after beat one, which is the E and beat two. Beat two, three, four, one, beat two, three, four. The other way to think about it, at least if you're a guitar player, is with the down and up strums. So the original was down, up, down, up, down, up. And then the second one is up, down. If this still isn't making sense to you, the other way you can picture it, as I've talked about before, is like a one-dimensional grid with 16 notes being either on or off. So what we're doing is shifting each of those notes one to the right. Since we shifted both notes by the same amount, the rhythm is still just as strong and syncopated as it was to begin with, but now it's a totally new pattern. And I really recommend anyone who's interested in this stuff to get your hands on some kind of drum sequencer like this, whether it's an uh, app for your phone, something on the computer, or even a real drum machine or an MPC. This sort of thing is really helpful for getting some hands-on experience with practicing moving these patterns around and seeing how it all works together. So what exactly does this accomplish? We first started talking about this in the very first episode of this series, only we were just moving one note around the measure. Basically, you can think of these two rhythms as two different pieces of vocabulary. When you're playing with other musicians, depending on what they're playing, one or the other of these pieces of vocabulary might fit better. And it also totally applies when you're writing songs or arranging music or producing tracks. 
Basically, the more rhythmic vocabulary that you have at your fingertips or in your ears, then the more equipped you're gonna be in any situation to have lots of options and be really versatile. So let's keep adding to that vocabulary. Let's shift this rhythm another time. Mm -hmm. So now we're playing on the and of one and then the 16th note right after B2, which is the E. So it's... Okay, I apologize if the lighting is different. I just lost power for a few hours there. So we're back and uh, where were we? Um, okay, so now we're on... Uh, where the f where are we? Rhythm number three. One and E three four. One and E three four. And then for guitar, we are back to down up like the first rhythm, except now we're starting on the and of one instead of right on one. So that's gonna be three, four, one. Okay, so now let's shift it another time. So now we've got the last 16th note of beat one, which is the uh, and then the and of two. One, up, and three, four, one, up, and three, four. And then for guitar, now, once again, all of the down strums become up strums, and up strums become down strums. So we've got up, down. One, So we can keep on moving this rhythm across the measure until we get 16 different patterns. Only I'm not going to give you those 16 patterns. That's right, this is your homework assignment. Write out all 16 different permutations of this Charleston rhythm and practice them. When you're practicing, as always, use a metronome or even better, a simple drum beat. I haven't explicitly said this yet, but when you're using a drum beat, don't use one that has any 16th notes at all. That way you have the freedom to use different amounts of swing or straight 16th notes. And of course, start slow, as slow as you can. Once you can play very evenly and consistently, then push the metronome up and keep going from there. Now, if you wanna check your work, you can get a PDF of all 16 of these patterns right now by heading over to my Patreon page and signing up. That's right, this is an ad for myself. Listen, for us musicians right now, things are a little crazy. We can't do any touring, and we can't even really play in our hometowns. So one of the ways that I'm staying sane and creative is by making a lot of videos for my Patreon page. And the support there is also really helpful. You can sign up for as little as $2 a month, and as soon as you do, then you can watch all of these videos that I've already made about guitar playing, recording yourself into Logic, video editing software, songwriting. You can also ask questions and make requests for future videos. I add new things every week and a lot of that is based on what my patrons are asking for. And for the higher tier patrons we do a weekly music hang live on Crowdcast where we just sort of hang out and go through a musical topic, do Q&A. So if you're interested click on the link in the description and check it out. So as I said before, this is all about developing your rhythmic vocabulary. So as you're practicing, of course you want to focus on executing well, but also feel free to start thinking creatively about what other music could exist around these patterns. You can even use it as a springboard for your songwriting. In the next video in this series, I'll show you some examples of doing just that, taking these different permutations of the Charleston rhythm and trying them out in different musical settings, writing some stuff around it, and that sort of thing. For now, I do want to give you one of these last patterns because there's a tricky thing that happens towards the end. After a certain point, your second note is going to go past the end of the measure, but since this is a one bar loop, it doesn't just disappear, it actually wraps back around to the beginning of the measure. So, for example, number 14 here would be this. So, as you can see, the second note is now on beat one of the loop. Depending on what makes more sense to you, you can think of the pattern starting empty like this, and then after the first time you play the rhythm, from then on it repeats.
or you can rethink the pattern altogether and consider it as starting on beat one and then having a long break and then the second note happens towards the end of the measure. It doesn't really make a huge difference whichever way you do it because after the first time it ends up being the same thing anyway. But um, yeah, that's the general idea with that. All right, that's it for this one. For some extra bonus points, try to listen to some music and identify some songs that have prominent examples of one or more of these permutations. That can be hip hop, R&B, funk, something that is very pattern oriented, and leave it in the comments. Thank you for watching. Go to the Patreon page to get those 16 rhythms spelled out and lots of other useful videos. Please subscribe and share this with your music friends, and I'll see you next time.